Building retuning training was conducted by Ron Underhill and Gu Pong Lu, scientists at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Classroom and on-site training for Maryland State Agency facility managers was conducted at Towson University in Towson, Maryland on June 17th through the 19th, 2014. This segment of training covers central utility plant cooling. Okay, chill water plant. Um, every degree increase in your set point, if you're making 42 degree water year round, that's typically what we see in a lot of places, 40, 38. Um, that's great for design day out here in Maryland when it's like it is right now, high humidity, high temperature. But this winter when you guys were freezing and you're running your chill water systems, were you still running 40 or 42 degree water? Don't answer that. If you were, uh, this is something you should be thinking about. Every degree increase is a 2% increase in efficiency. Not to mention you're running that chiller at probably real low part load. And like we talked about boilers cycling, are we cycling chillers now? Are we uh, potentially challenging them with uh, um, low pressure conditions, um, colder than normal condenser water if they're water cooled? A lot of issues. Now we've got to keep towers filled up. Just a whole host of issues when we're doing this in the wintertime. So again, if we can run chillers, this, this bullet, the second bullet, um, since the advent of VFD-driven chillers, uh, take this with a grain of salt. Sweet spot for VFD-driven chillers is lower. 50, 60 percent, somewhere in there. Maybe as low as 40 percent. Uh, so this, this was obviously written before uh, VFD-driven tr chillers. Uh, started to gain uh, the market like they are now. Smaller chillers, if you've got a pony chiller or smaller chiller, can it carry the load at night or on a weekend or for dedicated process loads like data centers, get better part load efficiency. Delta T's, optimal delta T on your uh, supply and return, 10 to 12 degrees. I've heard some chiller manufacturers and experts say, 16 degrees. So what are you guys running for delta T on your chill water plants right now? 10 to 12? Why is it possible? Why is it possible? Okay. Uh, this chart basically shows an example of about five, six, maybe seven degrees. So it's opportunity. Here's after they made some improvement or we simulated what an improvement. So that's typically what we want to see. Wider delta T. Uh, this chart basically shows uh, constant supply water temperature of about 42. Uh, return 52, it looks like maybe at night it drops down to 50, 48. So, uh, or maybe that's based on outside air temperature, it looks like. So you can see as things change, there's some uh, uh, response in my chill water loop, secondary loop. There may not be anything I can do about that unless I reset the temperature up change the differential pressure set point, some things that might have some impact on my delta. So uh, again, constant chill water set point. Uh, we know that makes sense perhaps in uh, high demand, but when we're in shoulder months at night on weekends when my loads reduce, that might be an opportunity for changing my set point, gaining some efficiency. Um, if my cooling valves are starting to close off on air handlers, either because they're shut down or because the loads went away at night. People turn lights off because we're doing a really good job of turning lights off in our buildings. People are turning their printers and computers off because we're really doing a good job of educating occupants to turn off non-essential loads. Some of those loads go away, solar gain at night. So those nights, especially weekends and then shoulder months, wintertime, where we, are those times of the day and seasons and year where we would say chill water reset may have some application to your plant if you've got a plant that was like this gentleman said earlier, it's serving lots of buildings and it's the tail wagging the dog. I got one building that needs 40 degree water year round. It's a vivarium, it's a lab, it's got a data center. You're probably stuck. But you gotta get creative. You wanna look for, can I still do some things? Maybe it's a two degree reset instead of an eight degree reset. So um, some of the things that result from having excessively low chill water supply temperature Cooling valves that are throttled down, again, or pump speeds that are throttled down, uh, and loop delta T's that are less than eight degrees. 
VFDs can only go down to certain speeds before it becomes problematic, whether it's on a pump or on a fan. So if I'm trending a VFD speed and I see that it's consistently below 50%, that might be a precursor to the fact that I'm running too cold of water. If uh, my delta T is real tight, that might be a precursor that I'm running too cold of water and I can relax those set points. So again, the trend of data that we are talking about continually in this training has value if I start to know how to connect the dots. Cooling valve positions, if I'm trending cooling valve positions on air handling units and I see that the majority of them are less than 50%, even as low as 20%, again, wow, okay, I'm, ma I'm matching my discharge temperature, if it's 55 degrees, my valve's hardly even open. That should start to tell me, okay, maybe I'm making too cold of water, maybe my pressure for my hydronic loop is too high. All, all things that are pretend to uh, be opportunities if I start connecting the dots. So we want to make sure that chill water temperature is not too low. Uh, can we reset it? Uh, we want to compare the supply and return cooling valve positions over time. Look at that delta T. If it's less than 8 degrees, do we see valves that are somewhere between 20% uh, and 75%? If, if they're greater than 75%, that might indicate that we're not low enough. And if we're going to implement a reset, this is, these are some of the things that we would recommend. Don't do it too fast. Chillers don't like to see changes, a significant change in especially return water temperatures. Uh, so if, if we're going to make a change to set point automatically over time, half a degree uh, Fahrenheit, maybe once every 15 minutes, so in an hour, I would say you're looking at a two degree delta or change maximum. Otherwise, you run the risk of tripping your chillers off, at least some chillers. And uh, this is just the second bullet. If I'm running at 42 degrees, what's the maximum that I should reset up to? We would recommend 42 to 47, five degrees. Now, some people have gotten real aggressive. We've seen some people go up to 52 degrees. And when are they running 52 degree water? Not this time of year. But if they're running their chillers, it's gonna be in the shoulder months and the cooler part of the shoulder months in the winter time. And they're doing it successfully. Again, uh, this is another way to do it, or this could be the way you do it based on any valve, the maximum valve. Uh, make sure that valve is working. Make sure it's not isolated closed. You don't want, again, one valve being the tail that's wagging the dog. Okay, differential pressure, primary, secondary loops. Uh, common practice to use DP sensors to vary the pump speed to match some set point, generally for design conditions. Um, as you're at part load, as your cooling valves start to close down, uh, you could potentially overpressurize. We talked about that on, on hot water loops as well. So this is an opportunity to uh, reset the DP based on on valve positions, save some pumping energy and still maintain adequate flow at your cooling coils. Uh, so if we can reduce it, uh, we would recommend reducing your loop DP. Again, in increments, half PSI every 15 minutes. If we're gonna do it automatically based on uh, average valve position or some maximum cooling valve position and uh, so anyway, so you know what what should be the lowest I should go down to? Well, if your starting point is 10, we would not recommend going any lower than 5 psi below that. If it's 15, we wouldn't recommend going any lower than 10. If if you find that you can go lower, again, that's part of knowing your building's personality, how it was designed, the hydronic loops. Uh, am I impacting? Other, am I creating other problems? That's one of the things we didn't don't really emphasize, but I'll say it right now: retuning when you make a change over here could create a problem over here. So the important thing about doing retuning is be systematic, don't do too much at once, and evaluate, get feedback from the building, did I create complaints? It's important not to say, oh yeah, I did this and that caused this problem. Maybe they were co coincidental. A lot of times people start retuning and they say, I did this and it created a whole host of problems. Well, they were affecting a change in a system that had nothing to do with what these people were complaining about, but it's easy to make a connection improperly and say that whatever we did over here caused this problem over here. Well, did it or was it just coincidental? 
make sure that what you're doing over here, if, it, if there's complaints going on, that it really did cause a problem. And make sure that if you're not getting a complaint, that you really are understanding what's going on in your building. So this is just a chart showing uh, reset before and after. Right about nine, I think similar to what we saw earlier, down around four to five PSI. Condenser water temperature control. How many people have water cooled chillers? Okay, how many are running basically same set point? Year round, 70, 75, or how many of you are resetting your condenser? Wow, okay, that's great. Um, and if you're resetting it, what is it based on? Temperature. temperature. You can look up there. Hopefully it's based on ambient wet bulb temperature. So hopefully you're, you've got instrumentation in place to calculate uh, ambient wet bulb. Uh, how low are, are you guys going? This says 65 degrees for chillers manufactured before 1999. That's just a general rule of thumb. But newer chillers and manufacturers are allowing you to run even colder condenser water. Um, can be problematic. Can be a huge opportunity. So does anybody want to tell me how low you're generally seeing your condenser water loops running? 70. We'd like to get it lower, but it depends upon how much you can get out of the air. Yeah. yeah so, and you, and you don't want to always run your fan at high speed all the time either. What's that? You don't want to run your, uh, we have a, you know, the fan at multiple speeds. It, it, it definitely has variable speed. Uh, we only have three speed settings. Okay. So you got low, medium, and high. How many people have VFDs on their tower fans? Great. So, you know, with VFDs on your tower fans, and yes, this climate zone, there's a lot of times out of the year when you're going to struggle to even get 70 or 75 degree condenser water. Uh, if you're running your chillers at night, again, if you're instrumented properly, you may find, and depending on what's going on with your weather conditions, you may have a dry front blow throw, through, which I heard uh, today on the news might happen on Monday. So, uh, you know, who knows? But, you know, there's definitely three to four months out of the year when you're probably not going to be able to reset or implement a reset or see uh, automatic reset have much value for this location. But the question is if I'm running my chillers year round or a majority of the time, then I probably can get away with, uh, or I should be at least evaluating a condenser water reset. Uh, what, what I don't want to see, what we don't want to see is I've got my condenser water set point so low that every tower and every fan is running at full speed, which we're guilty of doing uh, out where I'm from in a very dry climate. We are shoulder seasons here, the tough seasons. spring and fall. That, that's where you can really utilize yeah. these yep. techniques yep. to actually do it. I mean, June to you know September, we're, we're going to run wide open. Yep. You know. No, and that's, again, we want to reemphasize this, that the retuning concepts for relaxing things, set points, hot water, chill water, cooling tower, condenser waters. It's not, we don't want you guys to go out and do this. Hey, that guy from the Pacific Northwest National Lab said I re should reset my chill water loops up to 48, 52. And everyone's gonna look at you like you're crazy. It's Maryland, it's 95 degrees out, 100% humidity. W were those guys smoking the now legal marijuana? <laughs> no, we weren't. Uh, so we recognize the opportunity for resets is in the shoulder months, okay? So one more test. Um, this may or may not apply to you guys. Chill water pumps are running differential pressure set point of 20 psi. Set point for the chill water supply is 44. Uh, I did not write this. <clears throat> All trends on the air handler chill water valves show the valves are opening to less than 7% for a short time then closing. Outdoor conditions are sunny, 75 degrees, low humidity and light breeze. Set points are 60 degrees off the air handlers. So <clears throat> I think the, the numbers are off. These numbers are off a little bit. I could believe uh, maybe outdoor conditions of 60 or 55. But uh, anyway, uh, and, and the valve positions being 7% open. But we'll just take it because someone else wrote it. 
what would your recommendation be if this was in fact happening in a building that you were responsible for? There's your 52 degrees. Okay. <laughs> you could increase chill water. Yep, increase chill water to set point. Uh, you might be able to uh, lower your differential pressure set point of 20 so that your valves open up more. Install our pool windows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, we were here last night, and uh, we did, in fact, see uh, some buildings with windows open, so, uh, which is not uncommon, okay? So operable windows are great. I don't know about right now, but uh, yeah. Um, so on this uh, uh, test, your knowledge, is the chill water temperature too low, too high? I think we said it might be too low. The differential pressure set point too high, too low? I think we said it was probably too high. So here's some options, and uh, this is basically, we said, yeah, if you said uh, raise the set point or the differential pressure, lower it, or both, then good job. 